script kitty plus chat GPT equals super script kitty. All right, that's my lame joke at uh, uh, humor. But uh, yeah, it's taken me like three months to actually make a video on chat GPT. By now, you probably have seen this video topic on YouTube watered down with literally anything with chat GPT. Uh, so why not hop on that trend like I always do? In today's video, I will attempt to create some basic malware, which basically uh, infects a victim machine and connects back to the attacker-controlled server. The attacker then uploads some of the victim's machines to their own FTP server. It's really basic, something you can probably find in a Medium article, but why not see the powers and capability of ChatGPT? I've been following the story of ChatGPT relatively closely since it launched. Basically, I've been following the more of the business side than the actual technology side. Um, so I haven't really messed around with a ton of ChatGPT. But like I said, ChatGPT is like the new thing and it's basically everywhere, including of course the security news. So you can skip to this time frame for my development of this entire process. For those of you who don't know what ChatGPT is, I'm just gonna give a brief overview. So ChatGPT stands for uh, pre-generated div, div training transformer three basically it's a, uh, a natural language processing uh, chatbot which uses over 175 billion parameters and, and basically parameters are um, numbers or weights in, in the neural network model, and I really don't know what I'm talking about. I just found this on Google. OpenAI has trained the chat GPT model from text and databases, articles, books, ebooks, websites. I mean, basically everything on the internet, it's probably trained to some extent all the open source information it could find. Chat GPT can be accessed by going to chat.openai.com. The two areas that ChatGPT really has been proven strong in is understanding code and explaining information. And as somebody who's kind of a script kitty on this channel, doesn't really do like a ton of in-depth things, I wanted to test the powers of ChatGPT. So uh, I will be using ChatGPT to aid in my development of malware. And I know this is stupid, but uh, let's get into the project overview and yeah. All right, so for the project, it includes basically four steps here. Creating a nice looking phishing email, creating a small macro file or the de deliverable, uh, opening a terminal and establishing a connection back to the attacker machine, and of course, maybe creating some sort of FTP server to take those files from the victim machine. Now, I may have to piece together the uh, components, the skeleton of this code that's provided ch by ChatGPT, um, and I will be testing this in, of course, two connected virtual machines. Like, this would be a total real-world scenario, and I'm, I'm joking there. It's, it's pretty limited, but I just want to see the capabilities of what ChatGPT can do. So the criteria for this project, I mean, obviously it's basically just use ChatGPT, uh, craft the queries to supply and create the malware, and then attempt to bypass the anti-abuse or content moderation policies. And there actually is a way to do that this at the time of this recording, and that is by using the ChatGPT API, as well as this ChatGPT playground, which is a web interface. All right, anyway, let's get into this project create the malware, deliver, and see what the heck happens. Oh God. All right, so I have my steps laid out in front of me here, and it is time to try to use ChatGPT as the brains and creator of this stupid script kitty operation. Now, there are several ways that you can interface with ChatGPT. Of course, the most familiar and popular one is just the web interface that also has the most content uh, moderation or content restrictions. So if you go into ChatGPT, as I'll do here, uh, and you try to type in something such as uh, write me a reverse shell, of course. So of course here you can see it goes against the content policies or whatever that is. Now there is the OpenAI API. There are several programming languages that you can interface with it or you know you can just do whatever you want but um here of course you can see i have uh tested the open api integration with python uh it's pretty easy to read through there is this other web interface that you can use to interact with the open ai api and it's called the uh playground open ai playground 
And what's interesting about this is that it's a kind of a web-like interface. It has a web interface here, but it doesn't have any of the content restrictions because the API just doesn't have any restrictions uh, placed in it at the time of this recording. So I'll be primarily using the OpenAI Playground as my way of creating and receiving information. So with that being said, let's go ahead, starting with step number one, which is of course, just generating some stupid phishing email. ChatGPT is telling me no reverse shell, even though I wanted to write a reverse shell. So I'll just go into the playground here and um, I can write some sort of query, like write me a phishing email with an Excel macro or something. So I'll just do like, well, we'll go ahead and proceed to do something like this. Click submit and good enough. Uh, the phishing email, of course, doesn't really matter. All right, so this will work well enough for our phishing email. Of course, this isn't very convincing, but uh, uh, it will do good for now. So uh, I'll just copy this here and, and paste this into my step one. So on to step two, which I figured step one would be kind of a stupid and really time not really all right, so step two is create the Excel macro. And I am on a Windows 10 operating system. I do have Excel on this system. So I'll use my local installation of Excel to weaponize the file. Um, now there is the mark of the web protections that Microsoft, I think, introduced last year, uh, which provides lots of restrictions, but there is ways to bypass that, such as zipping a file or place, placing the file in an ISO file format. Um, like I said, Said, because of the limit many limitations of today's experiment I think what I'm gonna do is just um, well not do any of that so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to figure out a way to allow chat GPT to create the um, Excel macro to fetch a file from the attacker controlled server I asked the playground to generate a macro to fetch a remote file from some random web server and then receive the VB code All right, we'll proceed to use this code here uh, I am not very familiar with creating Excel macros myself. All right, so we'll use this response here uh, for our macro. I'm not very familiar with writing VB script macros. Uh, I did ask ChatGPT to write me or, or show me how to write an Excel macro, and I have enabled the developer settings already. So uh, let's go ahead and create this macro, go to macros here, and um, we will if I can figure out what the heck I'm doing. All right, let's click create. This will open my editor here and let's paste this in. Um, so some of the things I need to do is first get my website set up. And then uh, after that, I can create and weaponize my reverse shell file. I started the Apache 2 web server to share files between my machine and set up a place for the Excel macro to pull the reverse shell file. Let's see. All right, so I have my shell py. Shell py. Take this, copy this into my Excel macro. Okay, so I've added in my little web server host here as well as uh, a test file. I probably want to actually proceed to get the variable name. I asked ChatGPT how to implement the username environment variable since each username is custom to its Windows environment and you have to specify that when you're downloading a file. Now you didn't have to do this, but I, I just decided to do this. And then finally, I just troubleshooted some of my import errors and I was ready. All right, so here I have my uh, macro up and running. Basically, all I had to do was hard code my web server's URL as well as get or fetch the username that's logged into this environment. Um, so with a few ChatGPT queries, I was able to finally figure this out. I have this now running, I guess, or, or downloading a file onto my standard downloads folder here. All right, so for the next step, I'm gonna be creating a reverse shell file. Uh, and I'm going to be using, of course, ChatGPT. I'm going to be using the programming language Python, which is probably one of the most inefficient programming languages you can use for something like a reverse shell. And with ChatGPT, you can use any programming language, but I'm just going to use uh, Python because it's the one I'm most familiar with. But what's interesting is, you know, you, of course, you could use whatever you want. So um, I'm going to go ahead and type in write a reverse shell in Python. 
Ah, uh, yes, Python. It was very inefficient, and of course, I should have followed my own advice. So the summary of all these failed steps was I used the OpenAI Playground web interface to generate these reverse shell scripts in Python, and I attempted to initiate test sessions back into my attacker machine when I executed the Python file. And one problem I continually ran into was that basically ChatGPT was generating all these customized scripts, but you had to, of course, uh, suit them to your own environment. And this is, of course, to be expected, but sometimes these scripts just simply didn't work. Uh, eventually, I did get one of these Python scripts to work. I used PyInstaller to compile the reverse shell and then have the dash dash no terminal flag so that it doesn't show the terminal on your screen. Here was the apparent fact I looked over. You can't embed executable file formats in Excel macros, and of course, rightly so. To make this, quote, real world, I obviously couldn't have a user install Python on the machine or have a macro just download some py file format. So, it occurred to me. L-O-T-L, or Live Off the Land, aka PowerShell. I searched around Google for PowerShell reverse shell binaries, and yes, Google. Uh, even though this is a ChatGPT experiment, I kind of found myself using a mix of both Google and ChatGPT. I stumbled upon an article which talked about this tool called PowerCat, and it basically spawns a limited shell session. All right, so after what I suspected, Python did not work out, but we can go through living off the land with PowerShell. So I ended up finding a program called PowerCat. I'm sure penetration testers use this, but I was able to quickly get into um, uh, an Excel macro here. And basically all this is doing is downloading the PowerCat PowerShell file. And uh, if I go ahead and run this file, you're going to see that I have a stabilized shell here, uh, and, well, that was a lot easier than I thought. And, of course, I always overcomplicate things with Python, so um, my next step is to create this FTP server so that, um, yeah, I can do this. I used ChatGPT to tell me how to start an FTP server on my attacker machine, and ChatGPT told me to use VSFTPD. I had some issues with uploading files from my victim machine to the attacker machine, and, and one great quality of ChatGPT is debugging code in error messages, and it surprisingly will tell you the various error messages and how to troubleshoot it with very little context. Uh, so I had to change my configuration file in FTP to public and allow anonymous users to upload files. And after a few other uh, little errors I had, I finally got my victim machine to upload files to my attacker machine. All right, so I have completed my final portion, which is configuring an FTP server on my Kali machine so that I can upload files from my victim machine. Uh, ChatGPT came in very handy here. I troubleshooted through some error messages and just learned how to set up FTP in general. I had no idea how to do it. Uh, but basically, I started the F FS v FS FTPD config service and uh, this allowed me to upload files. So let's um, simulate this here. Well, I'll show you what I mean. So if I uh, control X here, we're gonna go ahead and do an LV. Oh. All right, so let's go ahead and do a, uh, an NC LVP44, go onto my victim machine, go to macros, run that. It's gonna catch the shell there, uh, and then we can proceed to um, go ahead and do an FTP into our, well, first off, let's let's just go into um, a test file. Let's do an FTP 192, enter the username and password, and do an LS. Okay, so now if we do a put and we supply the path. Let's see if we can go into here. Cat test.py and boom. So there we go. We have the final file and that completes the entire project. It only took me like five hours to do this. What a waste of time. All right, so that is the project. 
I I guess I successfully did it, but come on, let's let's be honest. This is such a limited environment that I don't know. But it, ChatGPT, I think it's going to be definitely a useful aid when it comes to code creation, uh, making polymorphic uh, different scripts, and also debugging or troubleshooting the errors of your code as well as just basic user education. I think it's great. So ChatGPT is free. You should go out and use it. And um, well, let me know what you have created with ChatGPT in the uh, the comments below. And yeah, until the next time, I I guess just stay stay. Don't I don't know. Have a good day.